hey currently you are reading growth in pediatrics you find it very easy when you are reading it but you are lost when you are solving mcqs so here is your solution i have brought a series of growth for you with lots of pictures diagrams and flow charts you will be remembering it easily understanding it quickly and you will be solving mcq in no time please do not skip anything watch this video till end Hi, I am Dr. Tria Virani Malde, pediatrician and consultant neonatologist and I will be your guide for pediatric subject. Please do subscribe my channel because lot is going to happen on this ch channel for pediatrics and give like to this video. So let us start learning growth. Before actual starting, let us pray to God to bless us all with wisdom and vision to shape our life. I seek blessings from all my teachers. For ease of understanding, I have divided this section 1 in 4 parts. Part 1 will be saying what is growth, part 2 will denote periods of growth, part 3 will be saying factors affecting the growth and part 4 will be laws of growth. So let us start with part 1 that is what is growth. Look around yourself. Anything which is alive, bird, animal, insect, plants, hallmark of that life is growth. If they are growing, it means they are alive. So this is also essential and unique feature of a life of child. It starts from the time of the conception and it continues till the 10 years of the life, till the child is become fully mature adult. So how does this happen? The process of growth happens by two ways. Either there will be increase in the number of the cell or there will be increase in the size of the cell. If you see the early embryonic life where there is organogenesis, there will be an increase in the number of the cell. But in the later half of the pregnancy till 10 years of the life, there will be increase in the size of the cell. So after part 1, let us move to part 2 that is periods of growth. Again periods of growth it will be either prenatal growth period or it is a postnatal growth period. If you see the prenatal growth period, the first two weeks we all know is called ovum. Starting from 2 weeks to 8 weeks it is called embryo. From 8 weeks till the birth it is called fetus. But there is a special terminology which is a perinatal period that starts around 22nd weeks of the life and it stays till the first week of the life. Sorry, it is 22 weeks of the gestation till the first week of the life. Now, now if you see the postnatal growth, again it is divided into few periods. From birth to first 4 week is called newborn. From 1 month to 1 year that is first birthday we call the baby infant. From 1 to 3 year we call it toddler and from 3 to 6 years when child starts growing to playhouse, uh, nursery or a kindergarten it is a preschool age period. 6 to 12 years is a school age. This is very important so pay attention over here 10 to 19 years is called adolescent and between 14 to 17 this is called mid adolescent age. So after part 1 and part 2 let us have some question answer time. I suggest that please do write answers in comment box along with the question number or you can write in a copy book because the upcoming videos will be solution of the MCQs, keys as well as the concepts and there will be lots of pictures and lots of mnemonic to remember you. So let's have a trivia time with question 1 that embryonic period is up to your options are A 8 weeks, B 10 weeks, C 12 weeks or it is D 6 weeks. Question number 2. Adolescent age starts at the age of A. 7 years, B. 10 years, C. 14 years or it is D. 17 years. Question number 3. World Health Organization defines adolescent age between A. 10 to 19 years, B. 10 to 14 years, C. 10 to 25 years or it is D. 9 to 14 years. Question number 4. Mid adolescent is, is the age between A 10 to 14 years, B 14 to 17 years, is it C 17 to 19 years or it is D 14 to 18 years. Now after part 1, part 2 and the multiple choice question let us discuss what are the factors which can affect the growth. As we already discussed that simplest thing like if you take a plant around yourself it also requires few things for the growth like air, sunlight, water, nutrients, soil. Similarly, for the growth of a child, it requires lots of th things. As we know that it all starts from the preconceptional period. So, there are many factors which are responsible for the growth of the factors. Mainly, it is antenatal factors and it is postnatal factors. If you divide the antenatal 
factors again there will be a three things either it is maternal or placental or it is a fetal factor and if you see the postnatal growth these are depending on this six factors we are going to discuss it in details in the upcoming slides so let us discuss first antenatal factor that is maternal factor if you see the maternal factor the general condition of the mother is very important general nutritional condition plays important role because if the she is well nourished and well built she is going to give good nutrition to the fetus her age is also important like teenage pregnancy or elderly prematurely gravida she may not be able to give good nutrition to the baby if she is suffering from the anemia she may hamper the growth or if she is having a substance abuse in the form of tobacco chewing smoking or alcohol the blood supply to the fetus will not be good if you see the obstetric condition that also plays important role like a pregnancy induced hypertension preeclampsia or if she is carrying a multiple pregnancy then also the growth of the fetus will be at stake maternal medical condition also important like chronic renal failure chronic cardiac failure rheumatic heart disease tuberculosis or a connective tissue disorders will have some effect on fetal growth it is very important nowadays to understand about torch if she encountered torch in the first trimester then baby may have a sequelae in the form of congenital rubella syndrome obviously if she has taken any drug which has a delirious effect on the baby then the baby may have a congenital malformation after the maternal factor let us move to a second factor that is placental factor placenta is very important healthy placenta healthy healthy baby good placental weight good fetal weight if you see the fetal factors the height of child as well as intelligent quotient and the head circumference directly depends on the parents similarly it's a general rule that boys are having a greater mean height and weight than girls hormones also play very important role and this is you should know and please pay attention to the upcoming slides because many a times questions are asked from the hormonal factors last but not least fetal growth factor those are complicated and i have not seen any paper having mcqs from this part so let us discuss hormonal influence on the fetal growth If you see the hormonal influence the first and foremost hormone will be thyroxine which starts secreting from the 12th week of gestation and its F deficiency will retard the skeletal maturation however it does not have any effect on the linear growth the second important hormone is insulin it has a very important role for tissue accretion and differentiation so for ease of your understanding thyroxine and insulin is essential in a late gestation third most important is a glucocorticoid though it doesn't have a direct effect but it has effect on the maturation of organ like liver lung and git especially in the late gestation that's why you must all be aware that the pregnant female who is, she is having a threatened preterm we are giving her steroid for the maturation of liver and lung so the newborn will not suffer with hyaline membrane disease last but not least is a growth hormone it is found in a very high level but it doesn't have any effect on the growth of the fetus so again after the hormonal influence discussion we are going to have a trivia time i again suggest please do write answers in comment box or else in a copy because we are going to have upcoming video for mcq cues keys question number 5 fetal growth is maximally affected by insulin b thyroxy c growth hormone or it is d cortisol Question number 6 which hormone is not essential for fetal growth in intrauterine period your options are a insulin b thyroxine c growth hormone or it is d cortisol question number 7 hormones mainly responsible for skeletal maturation of fetus is a testosterone b thyroxine c estrogen or it is d growth hormone we have discussed fetal factors specifically phenotype gender and fetal hormones now have a few words to complete the list fetal growth factors those are synthesized in fetal tissue it act by autocrine and paracrine mechanism and it has a effect on cell division these factors could be promoting or inhibitory this these are the list of promoting factors and inhibitory factors you do not need to remember it because it's not important as exam point of view 
So that compiles the list of maternal, placental and fetal factors. Let us move to postnatal growth factors like first is the genetic factors. Genetic constitutes, constitute is very important for the growth. If the fetus or a child is not having a proper genetic constitution like if she is having XO, one chromosome is missing, internal syndrome or extra chromosome like trisomy 21, it will also result in many of the growth disturbances. The second example is single gene mutation like Prader-Willi or Angelman syndrome also may have an effect on a postnatal growth and there could be a growth disturbances. The second important factor is nutrition. If child receive good nutrition, good vitamins, then there will be a good growth. Deficiency may result in a growth failure. Third essential factor is infection and infestation. If child suffers recurrent diarrhea or recurrent respiratory tract infection, there could be a growth failure, especially diarrhea. If there is a diarrhea, then there will be a risk of stunting at two years of age with each episode. And this is a statistics that 25% of the risk for more than 5 episodes of diarrhea less than 2 years of age. Parasitic infection, HIV and tuberculosis also result in growth failure. Chemical agent like androgen also have some adverse effect. Initially it can accelerate the growth but however the final height will be lower than the normal. So we have discussed genetic, nutrition, infection and chemical agents. Now let us quickly discuss social factors because it has just for the understanding and common knowledge. There is, it's not important as exam point of view. Good socioeconomic status, good growth of the baby. Good natural resources, there will be better nutrition of the children, better growth. Good climatic condition favors the growth, lower climatic condition will give more chances for infection infestation and lower chances growth lower growth emotional factor if the child is coming from a broken family or orphanage then there will be a lack of security and love more of anxiety growth hormone secretion will be disturbed and there will be a growth failure cultural habit and social taboos also plays important in the plays important role for the growth of a child good educated education of the parents will result in a good growth of the child. So we have discussed antenatal as well as postnatal factor. Let us move to part 4. Before moving to part 4, let us have some relaxation in the form of stretch your hand, stretch your legs, get relaxed and have a breathing exercise for 5 times. Put your cupped hand on your tummy and when we breathe in it should come out. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. Now let's start quickly part 4 that is laws of growth. I suggest that whenever you are reading or uh, listening to lectures or solving the MCQs, give your, yourself some time in between. So you will be ready again for the next topic. So what are the laws of growth? It is actually a continuous and orderly process. A growth pattern of person A will be different from person B, but the general pattern of the growth will be same for all. What is that pattern? That is a kifito, the growth of the order of the growth is a kephalocaudal and distal to proximal. If you see the kephalocaudal, what does it mean? It means that there is a initially there is a growth of head will be more for first three year and then there will be a more growth of extremities. See the statistics here that intrauterine period 50% of the body is occupied by head while the head legs and trunks are rudimentary while in the adult life 12% of the total body is occupied by health while 50% is occupied by the legs and trunk. So the growth of brain is rapid in first three years of the life and then it slows down and it shifts towards the periphery. That pattern of growth is called kephalocardo. Now what is distal to proximal? Distal to proximal means that the distal part of the body will grow first then the arm. So this is growth. Do not get confused between growth and development. Development is in total different 
growth is a increase in the size so we are discussing here that order of the growth is caudal caudal and distal to proximal after this first low let us see that what is the second low how does general body growth happen the fetus grow very fast in first half of the pregnancy then it slows down but in the first few month after the birth the growth velocity is very high and thereafter there is a period of slow and steady growth but initially it is very high again the second phase will come at the adolescent age the growth spurt will be there here now after the general body growth let us learn something about brain growth the brain grows rapidly in the later month of the pregnancy as well as early postnatal life this is also very important numbers for you to remember that one first year the 72% of the adult size is achieved second year 83% while 90% of the adult size is achieved by third year of life after that the brain growth is static third most important growth is lymphoid growth it is most notable between 4 to 8 years of the life it is organ of immunity and it is seen as enlargement of tonsil thymus and lymph nodes what is reproductive growth it is a dormant during childhood but it become conspicuous during puberty now again trivia time it's a last trivia time for you again i suggest either write in comment box or in copy so question number 8 post natally when the growth maximum velocity is maximum a in the first year b in the second year c in the seventh year or it is d in the 10th year question number 9 the maximum age for the growth of lymphoid tissue a 2 to 3 year b 4 to 8 years c 7 to 11 years or it is d 11 to 14 years question number 10 90% of the brain growth is achieved by a second year 3 b 3 third year c fifth year or it is d 10th year it was super easy wasn't it so it concludes growth series 1 i hope you all understood and learnt well i i would like to know your suggestion for the improvement of my lectures as well as let me know what else you would like to learn please write in the comment box your suggestions and we'll have upcoming video on mcq keys till that time take care of yourself study well learn well study smart